So the RTX 5090 released, it's incredibly powerful, but is it good enough for 8K? Well, I'm really excited guys, because for a short period of time, Samsung was able to lend me one of their brand new 8K TVs. It looks really incredible as well. Let's find out if the 5090 can finally handle 8K gaming. And let's go ahead and remove it from the actual wall right now, because yes, I'll be using my PC. Thank God for mini ITX. Real quick, so you can see, because I'm a madman, there is the RTX 5090 Founders Edition, which was sent to me by NVIDIA, by the way, so thank you guys for that, but let's go ahead and run downstairs and get this bad boy plugged in. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously, and not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9 to 12% depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. 8K gaming, here we come. <laughs> here is the... Hopefully, by the time this video goes live, this is no longer under embargo, but this is the QN900F. It is the 2025 8K mini LED TV from Samsung. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this computer in. It might not look heavy, it is a little heavy. So let's get this plugged in. Of course, I have extra cables. I need an HDMI cable, hold on. I know I got some HDMI cables in here somewhere. This is one of many cable bins that I have, so. Here we go. I don't think that's gonna reach. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to make it work. We're gonna make it work. I might have to put the computer in front of the TV because we're gonna have to make this one work. So let's disconnect that cable, connect this one. Now, just need to plug this in. Let's go ahead and power the TV on and I hope that it works. Okay, and now it's time to actually set it to 8K. Now it's only gonna be 60 Hertz, but it'll be good enough for what we're doing. Boom, there we go. Keep changes, make sure it's 60 Hertz at least, cause then it'll be, there we go, 60 Hertz. So I think I'm gonna start with Baldur's Gate 3 and then I'm gonna do Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 cause those are the two games I'm playing right now. And I'm gonna start at native 8K, but then I'm gonna work my way into DLSS because with Nvidia's new DLSS 4 transformer model, DLSS has actually gotten really, really good. And it's gotten to the point now where I don't know why you wouldn't use it. And certainly for 8K, you'd wanna use it as DLSS performance will actually be rendering native 4K and upscaling to 8K. And I think you could even use ultra performance. That's gonna be going from 1440p to 8K. It's a huge jump, but it's actually, I think still gonna look good because I found the DLSS, if you start with 1440p, typically looks great. And it's probably only gonna look better the higher and higher resolution you go. And with the QN900F being at 8K, it's a really high resolution. In fact, some people would say too high. I wouldn't, but some people would. So let's, let's go ahead and launch. Okay, there it goes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the controller because there's no way I'm playing on a mouse. Okay, got my controller. Perfect. Just gotta let it boot up here and then we'll get it set to 8K. Okay, so let's go over here. Yeah, it's set to 4K, so now let's set it to 8K. All right, there we go. And come take a look at this. Come look at how sharp this is. Like, look at the text there. Like, that's crazy. Like, look at, <laughs> look at like right there, how you can see, like we are super close to the screen right now. And that is incredibly clear. Like that, that puts 4K to shame. Now you have to be close to it, but it is like, if I wanted to use a TV as a monitor, I'd probably want it to be 8K if I could. But now let's go ahead and actually load it up. And let's see, you know, we gotta take, it's on DLSS quality right now. So let's start at native 8K and see how that is. All right, let's make sure we have HDR on. I don't think I even have HDR on. HDR is off. Okay, let's turn that on. HDR calibration. So 
The other thing about this TV, like you see this slider down here? This slider right here is the nits. It goes up to 4,000 nits in Baldur's Gate 3. This TV, as you can see, can reach typically, depending on the settings of the TV, you can typically get it to be about right just over 2,000 nits. It looks like in the game mode, it does drop a little bit, but 2,000 nits in HDR is pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set the brightness much higher as well. There we go. And now there we go. Now there is, now we're in a really bright like studio environment right now. So this might not look as impressive as it is, but when you're straight on looking at this, it is really pretty freaking bright as well. So, but on the top left corner there, I have my frame rate counter. If you want to come get a quick shot of that. And we're sitting here at my favorite scene on the beach where I like to test HDR and this is native 8K, mind you, and it's showing 78 frames per second on the RTX 5090. Now, I'm like having a hard time even believing that because that's really, really high. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually double check that. Like, that seems crazy. But yeah, I'm sitting here, DLSS is off, it's 8K, and it's actually, now I'm getting screen tearing because I need to enable VSync because I don't have G-Sync enabled right now. So let's go ahead, enable. V-Sync, there we go, that's all fixed now. But I mean, I don't know about you, but this is like to me for a game like this, this is actually playable and this is native 8K on the RTX 59. Like that is so wild. I, like, I honestly thought this was gonna be way, way worse, but I think part of the reason why it's actually running really good is because the RTX 5090, it has an absolutely enormous increase, not only in the amount of video memory, it goes up to 32 gigabytes versus 24 in the 4090, but it also has an enormous increase in the memory bandwidth for that memory. So you're just able to swap in textures and all this data from the game so much quicker to the GPU. I think it's close to like 80% higher memory bandwidth off the top of my head versus the RTX 4090, which was already really, really good. But like this is, come take a look at like really close up here. I'm gonna go ahead and talk to this character and um, just like look at their faces. Like look at, look at the armor here. This is native AK, so there's no anti-aliasing going on at all. And still the edges of all these objects are incredibly clear. It looks like I'm using anti-aliasing and the text is incredibly clear. And I'm able to get really close to immerse myself in the screen in a way that you just simply can't with 4K. Like at this distance from a 75 inch TV, which this is, this would just look really pixel, well, not maybe really pixelated is a bit of a stretch, but it would certainly look pixelated. This almost doesn't look pixelated at all. The hair, you can see a little bit of aliasing on it. And I am dropping now down to like 60 frames per second here in the setting. It looks like about 55 frames per second, but I already feel like on a controller, this is pretty okay. But for me personally, I would consider under 100 frames per second, kind of borderline for me. I've gotten so used to 240 Hertz OLED monitors now that I really want to try and get a higher frame rate. So let's go ahead and use DLSS and see, you know, can we get a higher frame rate than 100 frames per second. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So let's go ahead and start off with, so we're at native and let's use DLSS quality and let's see where we're at now. So the funny thing about DLSS and I've noticed this recently is once you get to higher resolutions like 4K, 5K, 6K, 8K, these really high resolutions, quality DLSS in my opinion, this to me actually looks better than native. There's a slight drop in sharpness, but if you take a look at the hair again, like get up close to the hair and you're gonna see that the aliasing is gone and you get a higher frame rate. Yeah, you can see on the hair there, it's like all that aliasing is just completely gone. And again, we're getting higher performance. So take a look at the performance up there. Now we're running at, it looks like between 110 FPS to around 100. So 100 to 110 FPS, which to get 8K level visuals at over 100 frames per second in this game is crazy good. Like I, I actually was not expecting the 5090 to be this good. So, but again, I wanna get actually higher than 120. For me, that's like, if you can get higher than 120 frames per second, that's really good. So let's go to balanced DLSS, which is still higher than 4K internally, but it's outputting to 8K. Now we're sitting at like 117 FPS to it looks like over 100 and 30 frames per second. That is insane for the RTX 5090. 
But let's finally touch on performance DLSS because this is gonna be rendering internally a 4K resolution and then upscaling it to 8K and 8K is exactly four times 4K. So this should actually still look really, really good. And I wouldn't be surprised if this looks almost as good as native 8K. And again, you're running a quarter of the resolution, which might actually make 8K gaming possible, though there are gonna be those games where it's still running 4K natively is really, really tough, which is effectively what we're doing. And here we can see now we're getting 130 frames per second here all the way to 160 frames per second. And I still feel like this looks about as good as native 8K. It has less aliasing than native 8K, but it is a slight reduction in the sharpness. But you could even use ultra performance, which would be upscaling from 1440p. And I just wanna check that real quick because at ultra performance, this now, <laughs> This is ridiculous. So now we're getting between 170, if you wanna take a look there, 170 frames per second, all the way up to over 200 frames per second. And I'll be honest with you guys, to me, this still looks better than 4K. It's now reached a point where it looks worse than native 8K for sure. There is a reduction in the sharpness but this still looks really, really good. And I would say this looks better than native 4K in a lot of ways. Now it might depend on the game, but in this game, I mean like look at how responsive this is. Just running around getting well in excess of 100 frames per second, like 200 frames per second and getting visuals that are better than 4K. That is crazy. But to be honest with you guys, this game is a little bit easier to run on the GPU than some other games. And in this area, it's gonna be, there's gonna be other areas that are gonna be a little bit harder to run than this too. But I wanna take a look at another game that's actually pretty hard to run, but not horrible. And that's Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I'm playing that game right now and I'm really enjoying it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one next. Okay, so now I got Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 up and I'm actually running native 8K. And as you can see, this game's a little bit harder to run. If you wanna take a look here at native 8K with no DLSS, nothing like that, I'm currently getting about 30 frames per second, which yeah, is not ideal, but honestly not that unexpected for the RTX 5090. I really love this game and let me tell you, this looks incredibly sharp right now. If you look at the ground, like that is really wild how good that looks, but obviously 30 frames per second at native 8K is not gonna be a great uh, experience overall, getting around 32. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually, even though this looks really, really good at native 8K, I think it's safe to say that this is just not very playable at native 8K. So here's the great thing, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, as well as pretty much every game I play also has DLSS. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on DLSS here. Ah, here we go. I'm gonna turn on DLSS here to quality. Okay, boom, there we go. So just going from native 8K to quality DLSS in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, it's already jumped to 50 frames per second. And I would consider this almost playable. I mean, it's certainly playable. And it does look, in my opinion, pretty much yeah, just as good as native 8K in a lot of ways, because again, it's gonna get rid of a lot of that aliasing. It's just gonna be a little bit less sharp, but I mean, if you look at stuff in motion here, because I'm using the new DLSS transformer model, I'm not seeing ghosting. It's looking super, super crisp. And honestly, overall, this still looks really great. And right now I'm actually even getting like 60 frames a second almost, but I think we can do better. Again, I like to get hundred frames per second or more. So let's go ahead into the settings and drop this to DLSS balanced. Yeah, ooh, balanced again there, boom. And now going to DLSS balanced, we're still not getting much more frame rate. It seems to have like some weird cap on there. So let me see if, reducing this to performance and rendering native. Okay, so native 4K. It looks like now we're getting kind of close to 70 FPS, but I think I'm using like the experimental graphics, or no, I'm on, I'm on the ultra settings. On Baldur's Gate 3, I was also 
on ultra settings. Here I'm also on ultra settings. For some reason, it wants to keep trying to like cap me to 60 FPS a little bit here. But when it does it, I'm getting closer to about 70 frames per second in this castle, which this castle is pretty hard to run. So that's actually pretty good to be getting 70 FPS. But I think we're gonna have to drop this one down from performance. Oh, we can't even go lower than performance. So performance DLSS, you're kind of like locked into this, which means Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is one of those games where it looks like you cannot, at least at ultra settings, you just cannot get over 100 frames per second. Now this is playable, but you would have to go in here and drop it down to something like 4K and then change the DLSS to get it working. But I mean, at that point, that's not the point of this TV. We're not gonna do that. So, <laughs> so yeah, there are gonna be some games like Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 where if they don't have ultra performance DLSS and this game is really hard to run, you're gonna have to go into the game and change it from 8K down to 4K and then also use DLSS to get good performance. So it's really gonna depend on the game. I'm actually gonna go ahead and even though this looks really, really good and I'd love to sit here and play games at 8K, I gotta return this TV tomorrow to Samsung. So I better get, get on to actually testing the various different games. And then we can figure out, you know, can you run games at 8K with DLSS or 8K native? Or is it still not gonna be a reality in the majority of games? Well, let's go ahead and find out. All right, so I decided to run three more games at 8K off camera and what you're going to notice here is I'm definitely making heavy use of DLSS upscaling because to be honest with you guys yes I can run native 8k on these games but if you actually run something like 4k and upscale to 8k versus native 4k the difference in image quality is so so tiny that I do really feel like upscaling is the way to go if you have an 8k screen and in that way you're essentially getting the same performance as 4k but getting a higher quality image so taking a look here first at Call of Duty Black Ops and you can see with DLSS performance, I actually only got an average frame rate of 80 frames per second, which is pretty low. And do keep in mind, that's effectively running native 4K and then upscaling it to get better than 4K visuals. But then if I actually move it down to DLSS Ultra Performance, which you definitely can make use of, at 8K, well that's actually effectively 1440p and here we're getting 113 frames per second on average when using the extreme preset. Now of course you could reduce settings, but it does go to show that some games are still gonna be really hard to run even when upscaling from a much lower resolution. Now, Fortnite was definitely different using competitive settings and DLSS performance. I got an average frame rate of 178 frames per second. And again, at that frame rate to get better than 4K native quality is really, really crazy. And the 1% lows were still very respectable as well at 152 frames per second. And then the final game I ran was Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. And much like Call of Duty, this one was hard to run. Using DLSS performance, I still only only got around 81 FPS and around 54 on the 1% lows. And even when using DLSS Ultra Performance or natively rendering 1440p and upscaling it to 8K, I still only got 98 frames per second and 57 on the 1% lows. Now I say only, but with a single player game like this, roughly 100 frames per second is definitely very acceptable. And you could certainly use things like frame generation to get up to 200 FPS, etc. And there's certainly games out there that make sense to use frame generation. But it is impressive to see that, well, when you take a look at all the games I ran today, pretty much all of them did run at fairly acceptable frame rates. Now, are they the exact frame rates that I'd want to see? Not necessarily, and I do feel like that for the most part, either a 4K or a 5K display would be a better choice even when using upscaling as 8K is still just a little bit too hard to run if you're trying to get into the hundreds of frames per second, even when making heavy use of upscaling as well as other features. But I gotta give it to NVIDIA with the RTX 5090. This thing, considering it's absolutely insane, 1.8 terabytes roughly of memory bandwidth and 32 gigabytes of VRAM, I mean, we're breaking 100 frames per second in some games. This is, I would say, the first GPU that, yes, while you do have to use upscaling, is technically a GPU that you could run 8K games on and have a really, really good time. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. 
Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.